Now, the European Union is not fit for purpose when it comes to fighting poverty. That is the assessment of the UN Special Envoy, Olivier de Schutter, who's calling on EU countries to focus more on eradicating poverty. His report accuses the EU of failing to reach its own target of lifting 20 million people out of poverty by last year's deadline. De Schutter wants the bloc to boldly rethink its entire socio-economic approach. One in five people in the EU were already living in poverty in 2019. That's more than 92 million people. And the pandemic has affected millions more who had never experienced poverty before. The UN report also found that at least 23% of European children live in poverty. That's 19.4 million children. And women are disproportionately affected. Well, let's uh, bring in the author of that report, uh, Olivia de Schutte, who's the UN special, or rapport, uh, special envoy, I should say, uh, calling on con EU countries to focus more on eradicating poverty. Uh, Mr. Schutte, thanks for coming in to talk about this. Why do you say that the EU has failed so dismally here? Why is it not fit for purpose? Well, the EU has a number of constraints that it, um, it has imposed on itself that makes it very difficult for member states to effectively tackle poverty. First, because fiscal competition between countries is institutionalized, and as a result, it's very difficult for these countries to adopt progressive taxation schemes. Secondly, because they compete on wages and on social contributions paid by employers, so it's very difficult to increase wages in line with productivity gains. And thirdly, because these countries are imposed a macroeconomic straitjacket as a result of joining the, the euro, the single currency, they have to maintain a, a fiscal discipline, making it very difficult for them to invest in social protection. And as a result, it is extremely uh, difficult for European countries to do more to combat poverty and reduce inequalities. So let's have a look at what this actually means on the ground. When we talk of a European living in poverty, those one in five, it's an astonishing number, isn't it? One in five, 20 percent who have experienced poverty. What does that actually mean? What, what is the range of poverty being experienced? Indeed. Well, that measure of poverty takes into account um, the fact that all people who make less than 60 percent of the median wage will be considered at risk of poverty. And it also includes all people who are severely materially deprived, in other terms, who live in conditions of destitution, not being able to afford the, the goods, services that make for a decent life. So it's a, it's a category that's rather broad and that includes a measure of relative poverty, people who may not be able to withstand the shock, such as the economic crisis we are going through, would be included in this figure of people at risk of poverty. You say that the COVID crisis is a, it's a kind of opportunity to reinvent. How is that? Well, look, following the crisis uh, uh, induced by the pandemic, the EU set aside all the rules that we thought were going to be taboos for, for, for the generations to come. And it decided to allow states to spend lots of money in state aid to support companies. It decided to set aside the fiscal disciplines imposed on, on countries in normal times. And it decided to launch a massive recovery plan worth 750 billion euros in order to restart the European economy. And I think these measures that are dictated by the emergency, by the sanitary crisis, may be um, a blueprint for the, future, um, uh, for the future of the EU. And it must learn from this crisis that it should build social resilience, not put all its um, hopes in growth and efficiency gains, but also build resilience, uh, which means investing much more in social protection and, and protecting people from economic shocks. And I think we now are witnessing in the EU a significant revision of the dogmas that have been um, essentially guiding the EU's past responses to crisis over the past uh, 20 years. Do, do you think there's a kind of endemic fear that, that you know, you had this previous target of taking uh, 20 million people out of poverty by 2020, which was missed by nearly, by nearly 9 million. Uh, do you think that the fear of missing, you know, another target would choke this endeavour to find a solution? Yes, I think uh, there is a fear to set a new target because of a fear to, again, um, miss the target by a large margin. However, we do not have any successor to that target that was set in 2010. And without any measure of progress related to poverty reduction, without setting any objective, um, 
the EU member states will not be incentivized to do more to fight poverty. And I think we should abandon this myth that just by growing the economy and by creating more jobs, whatever the quality of these jobs and whatever the levels of wages, we shall reduce poverty. That has not worked in the past. And we need to take seriously um, the, the need to reinvest in support to, to poor families, support to children in particular, um, and not simply put all our hopes in economic growth, which will be difficult to, to achieve and which is not going to be inclusive enough if we don't really focus on people in poverty. And for this, we need a new target to be set. I very much hope that the Commission will propose one in an action plan on, on the, the European Pillar of Social Rights that it shall propose in just a few weeks' time. Okay. Olivier de Schutte, UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights. Thanks for your time. Thank you.